So, um, while you were off, off having a cup of tea, uh, my son Brendan and I moved the flywheel round to number one, uh, the number one mark. So we know the pistons at the top dead centre. But, of course, it's not quite so simple. You'll remember from your school days that on the four-stroke cycle, we've got the induction stroke, we've got the compression stroke, we've got the power stroke, and we've got the exhaust stroke. So, the piston will actually be a top dead center on two occasions. Only one of them is the correct one. So, how do we know that we're on the correct stroke here? It turns out that it's actually quite simple. Whenever this piston here is at the correct stroke, these two valves here will be rocking. This one's about to go down on its induction stroke. The exhaust valve will be closing and the inlet valve will be opening. So, um, at this stage, um, we might have to swap cameraman with uh, operator because the compression on this engine is actually so good that I'm hardly able to turn her over and I don't have compression levers. So, that's it. Okay, I'll come forward again. Now you'll see as the flywheel comes up to number one, the exhaust valve is closing and the inlet valve is opening. I hope that's, I hope that's clear there. Really, that's, that's the hard bit done. So, to set the actual tappets itself, that's pretty easy. I go to the rocker cover, and on the rocker cover here, you'll see it gives me inlet valve 4,000, outlet valve 8,000. So we pick up our, our friendly feeler gauge. I prefer these feeler gauges here because they're bent and it's easy to get them underneath uh, where they need to be. So there we've got our, our 4,000 and there we've got our 8. I take out from my pocket my favourite combination spanner which has got uh, 3 16 one end and a uh, quarter the other end. This is a little lock, lock nut here you might like to home in. Yeah? So I slacken that lock nut, just check the top of it. Slacken that nut, <coughs> lock nut. Position my, my 8,000 feeler gauge in there. Okay, take my friendly screwdriver. Brent, maybe you could hold that there for me with, with one hand. Could you hold the feeler gauge? I know that's cheating a bit. Oh. Slide it back in again. I like to have the, the lock nut held. Screw down the adjuster until the feeler gauge is just, just moving. You see that? It's just nice and snug moving in there. Then we tighten up that nut without letting the adjuster move. Don't let the screwdriver move and tighten that nut down. Job done. And then <coughs> the inlet valve will be the same. We slacken the lock nut. Oh boy. Which is quite tight. Get our five thigh, four, or sorry, four thigh. Yeah. Slide it in there like that. You can hold that for me. Get our screwdriver. Tighten the adjuster down until that's just not too tight, not too loose, until it's just feeling just right. Okay and tighten the lock down. Job done. Maybe that's a little bit tight actually. It just takes a wee bit of practice. And that's it done. Okay, 
So that's number one done. Then we do number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. No, we don't. We could do it that way, but it'd be a lot more work. What we do is we do them in, in firing order sequence. Now, in a six-cylinder uh, engine, six-cylinder gardeners anyway, the firing order is one, five, three, six, two, four. Back over that again. One, five, three, six, two, four. We've done number one, so we now go to number five. When number, number five is coming to top dead centre, the valves on number two will be rocking. The inlet valve will be closing and the, the exhaust valve will be closing and the inlet valve will be opening. Have you got that? Number one and six go together, number two and five go together, and three and four go together. So that's the sequence you'll do them in. One, five, three, six, two, four. I don't think I need to do all six. Now, if you've been paying attention, you may say, well, what happens if it's an odd number of cylinders? What happens if it's a three cylinder or a five cylinder? Then we take a slightly different approach. Whenever number one is at top dead center, which it is now, you might need to come around this side, Brendan, please. You'll find that the latching lever on number one has no effect because the piston's at top dead center and the injector has done its business, so the little plunger inside is also at top dead center, or very close. So it's, it's ineffective. The same thing, whenever number five comes to top dead center, then <coughs> this one will be ineffective. Okay, I hope you've got that. Um, that's all there is to it, really. Nothing more than that. It's just a matter of being patient and taking a bit of care and, and not rushing it, taking your time. But once you've done it, uh, I don't know, say a hundred times and then you've got the hang of it. <laughs> so maybe just at this point we'll, we'll pause and we'll say, why do we set the tablets? What, what's all the fuss about here? Um, there's a variety of reasons. If you can imagine <coughs> the rocker is sitting on top of the valve stem like that, pushing the valve up and down. Now, if there was no gap then you wouldn't know where the valve was. And if that was adjusted wrong, there's always the possibility that the piston will come up and hit the valve. Whereupon the valve stems will probably bend and you'll wreck the whole engine. You'll do a lot of damage. So that's one reason. Um, another reason is we have to allow for heat expansion in the whole engine, but in particular on the valve stem. The valve stem is going to get hot and it's going to increase in length and come up closer to the rocker. Therefore, those tappet settings are really quite critical. The <coughs> gap will also have an effect on timing because the camshaft is rotating and the point at which the valves open and close is really quite critical for the performance of the engine. You can't have it just any old way because otherwise the engine could turn out to be smoky or should not pull as well because valves are, are, are uh, opening too early or, or opening too late. Uh, I hope that's clear. Now, if the valves are not set properly, particularly if they're too loose, you'll hear them. Particularly with the rocker covers off, if the engine's running, you'll hear a little, a little... Um, it's really hard to describe this. I suppose ideally we should have a running engine here with purposefully uh, loose uh, tappets, but we're just not that organized this morning. Sorry about that. But you can, once your ear gets used to them, you, particularly with the rocker covers off, you'll just know. You just know. They're just, they're just too, clangy is too strong a word. They're just, they're too clicky. Just too clicky. In fact, I suspect that's where the word tappet comes from, from that tappet sound that valves are getting tapped by the rockers. I hope that's clear.